everyone. This is Denise with Creates with Love, and I wanted to show you a little bit about this file before we proceed. Um, first of all, it would be easiest just to show you what it's going to look like. Well, kind of what it's going to look like. This was a shadow box project that I've done previously, and this one is done in shades of blue, and it's got little uh, birds on here. So there's three different types of birds and they're in three different shades of blue and it's in a white frame. So the one I'm going to make today is in a black frame and it has, it's going to have actually four shades of brown. And so that's the project that I'm going to be working on with this file. So just to kind of let you know, each section of a color has all three shades of blue. So in the project I'm going to be doing today, this one's going to have four shades of brown. So I've got four different kinds of dragonflies and four different shades of brown based on the color of Cricut paper that I have um, on hand for this project. You can use whatever color papers you like. All you would do is, is click on your grouping and change your color up here. So in addition to this, the tricky part is guessing, right, how many dragonflies you're going to need for your project. My uh, heart is, which is going to be the shape of the dragonflies, is, let's see, approximately, so it's 10 inches wide is the size of where I'm going to fill all of this with dragonflies. So picture this heart having four different shades of brown. And as you can see by looking at this, if you look here and start to count how many little birds these are, and I made the dragonflies the same size, it takes a lot of dragonflies just to fill, or I'm sorry, birds, just to fill this bottom layer. Plus you want some extras to kind of trickle into the, the layers that are up above. All right, so let's go back to here. So what I did to make it easier is I made four files that are all one color and you can change them as you change your paper. These are the same dragonflies as up above, but there's a smaller grouping. So because the bottom layer, right, I want all four different designs, but I'm not going to need as many in there plus the ones that trickle up and out. So I'm going to, I already made these all brown. That's going to be my first layer, the darker brown. All of these are the same as the dragonflies down below, but it's a bigger grouping, right? The higher you go up the heart, the more dragonflies you're going to need. So these are all in the same color of, of papers that I have. But what I'm going to do is I'm not going to use these yet. I'm just going to click each layer and since I'm only going to be cutting the smaller grouping, I'm just going to shut these layers off. So when you click here, you can see how this is highlighted. So I just click the top part, the eye right there, and it shuts that layer off. Same thing with this one. It's going to bring it up to the right. And I'm going to click the upper eye right here. This is the highlighted part. This here matches this. So I'm going to shut this eye off right here. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. I'm going to click on this grouping. It'll take a moment. For one thing, too, a large file does take a little bit longer to react. Okay, so again, I, it's highlighted. I want to click the eye off. And this one, I'm going to click on it. Wait for it to highlight over here. There it goes. And click the eye off. All right, so now what I have is four smaller files of dragonflies. There's four different kinds and my heart. Now the heart, just so you know, you can, you're only going to use this heart to trace onto the background of your shadow box. So this could be whatever paper you want. I usually pick a piece of paper that I don't plan on using for any project. So this is great for scrap paper or um, just maybe you got a design in a booklet and it's just not a, a design or a color or pattern that you're really thrilled with and you don't anticipate using it. And if you're short on paper, this is all you have. Keep in mind, if you do cut out a heart, you could even still use your snap mat 
and cut out other things out of this paper if it was a paper that you didn't like. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and click make it because everything's ready to go. Nothing needs to be mirrored. So I'm going to click make it. And it looks like it's going to do two different mats of brown, which is fine. And then I've got my heart, which happens to be a pattern piece of paper that I have. And it doesn't look like I could comfortably fit these. You know, you could rearrange them so that you fit them all on one. I'm not worried about it because I'm definitely going to be using more brown paper. So I'm not going to even mess with it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and click on continue. Okay, and I've got medium cardstock. I have it saved as a favorite. If you don't have it saved as a favorite, you want to go to browse all materials and choose your cardstock that you plan on using. So I'm going to go ahead and click here. And it's just going to say to load your fine, tip, your fine point blade and then press load your mat and press the load and unload button. And there you go. So I'll meet you over at the maker. Okay, so I loaded my paper. This is going to cut out the heart. This is the paper that I'm not worried about using. And uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and load it into the Cricut Maker. I've already got my fine point blade here. I'm going to click the load button. And the go button. It's going to cut out our heart. Turn my mat upside down, makes it better to pull off your design. This was really thin paper that I was using. Okay, so now I'm going to load my brown paper. This is the Cricut paper that I'm using. And I like their color packs because they already have the ombre different colors in each color pack. So if you get a pack of browns, you're going to have all the shades already picked out for you, which is nice. Okay, I'm going to load the mat. And hit the go button. This is going to take a little bit to cut out.
All right, so it looks like we had a couple that kind of folded up here. Could have been something on on the uh, on the blade at the time. So what I'm going to do is, and some of these are really fine, intricate size cuts. So I'm going to turn this over and carefully peel it off. Some are going to stick to the mat, and some are just going to come on through, to be expected. That's why you want to do it slowly and carefully. What I'm going to do is use this little uh, scraper here, and I'm going to, for these, because they're very intricate, I'm just going to kind of fold it a little bit on the edge of my counter here, and just get underneath it. Just kind of move it. And, you know, this could take some time. see if coming from the angle might be a little easier. And if you have something even a little thinner than this edge, it might even work better. So this was a pretty intricate cut, 
and so I lost two in the process. For whatever reason, this upper right hand wing had one spot where some of the paper was was sticking, like it didn't cut all the way through. Could be the file itself, hard to say, but since it was the same wing in the same place, but not on every single dragonfly. Um, but, you know, I make sure that I cut extra for things like that. So in the grand scheme of things, it's really no big deal. So we've got three of our designs here. And then we've got the one more here. This mat, as you can see, I've used it a bunch of times on a bunch of different things. It's probably time to clean it. Um, but what makes it nice is it makes it not that difficult for these dragonflies to come off. It would be a little harder if it was a brand new mat. You might want to unstick it a little bit by putting like t-shirt material across it to get some of the tackiness away. like my sleep. <laughs> uh, okay, so real quick I wanted to show you. These are the other colors that I'm going to be cutting out. I don't want to take up your time, so I'll cut this off of film. And then I wanted to show you what the bottom piece looks like. So this is the, the bottom or the backing of the shadow box. So here's, here's the bottom and here is the shadow box. I still have to clean it, but so you can see the width of it here, the depth, I should say. And I took black cardstock and put it, this is 12 by 12 cardstock. I put it over the backing of the cardboard piece and you could barely see the cardboard in the edges. So I just took a black Sharpie and went around the edge. And when you put the glass in it, you can't even tell. So then I took that heart shape that I had cut out and then I took a pencil, I just lined it and measured it and then I just traced around the heart. Now depending on the type of effect you want, if you wanted a portion of the heart open where the birds or the dragonflies come out and flutter around, then just make sure that you erase this pencil mark wherever you want that section to be. You don't have to have a section like that. You could just have them trickle out in different areas. So, but I wanted to mention that since I used a pencil, every all the all of these dragonflies in the different colors are going to be put right on the edge, so we don't have to worry about the edging. So it's only if you wanted an open part of the heart where the dragonflies are kind of flying out and going off in their direction. All right, so basically what I do is I take each dragonfly. You can see I've done a couple here. I just pick one up and the card is the same. The paper is the same. So you just fold a wing up like that. It doesn't have to be all the way. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just so that when you place it on your design, it's going to be, some are going to be higher, some are going to be lower and then you'll line it up along the line and then you'll fill in all of the areas with the different colors. So it just seems to go quicker if you just pick up a dragonfly, fold it, throw it in. You don't really have to be that careful with it. So either wing because right they fly in different directions and you drop it in. And you do this with all of your little dragonflies and then when it comes time you just pick out your dragonfly, dot the glue on it and press down, you're done. So I hope you like that little tip there. I had tried different methods and this one seemed to work the best and the quickest. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and shut the camera off and I'm gonna cut out the rest of my paper. 
I'm going to try to keep a tally of how many dragonflies it's going to take for a 10 inch heart. That way it'll give you kind of a, a gauge on how, how much to cut for your total project. All right, so I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so I've got all of my shapes cut out, all of my little dragonflies in the four different colors. And what I wanted to show you, let me get my stool here because I'm going to be sitting for a while. Um, I wanted to show you how I do this, okay? So, but before we get to that, I want to show you what I did with these dragonflies. These are the ones that are, they have the intricate wing on them. So, let me see if I can kind of... Put it on, well, I think you can see it from here. Okay, so it's got this like kind of a loopy wing. And so what I did was I put glitter on both sides of one wing. The reason why one is I still want to be able to glue it onto the heart. And so let me show you how I did that process. It didn't take long at all. I got on my plate here, I put some of this art glitter glue. I think you can see it over there. It dries clear. It's one of my favorite glues to use for card making or pretty much any paper project. So I put a little dab here on the plate and then I used a paintbrush and I just picked up a wing, dabbed some glue on both sides and then I took this little container and I sprinkled, I poured about, uh, about an inch of glitter in there and I just dipped my wing in there and then just plopped it on a plate to dry. It's not going to stick to each other because it's got the glitter on it. So I did that to all of my, I'm calling these little lace wing dragonflies. And I did that, the reason why I've not done one with glitter and I thought it would be pretty because it's kind of a dark color project with the black frame and the black background and then the dark brown and then it graduates up to a lighter shade of brown. So I thought it would kind of give it some nice interest and some bling for it. Okay, so that is that and I'll be sprinkling these in amongst all the way through the project. If I want more, I can always cut more as well. So what I've got here is there's 72 of each color times four is 288 dragonflies here. Each color, again, has all four designs, or I should say in here, all three designs, and then the fourth design being the leaf, like the lace leaf one. Okay, so as you can see, here's my four colors. They're gonna graduate from the darker all the way up to the lighter up top. Okay, so I'm gonna set these out up here. So basically what I do is I line them all up now I'm going to have a little bit of dragonflies come out of the top part of this heart. So I took my Prism, Prisma color eraser. You can use any eraser, but these are one of my favorite art erasers. They don't like, they don't tear up the underneath part. They're really super friendly that way. So I had erased just a little bit right in here. And that way I don't have to worry about the line. Right? Like all around here, I have to make sure that there's a dragonfly placed on it, such as like that. Now that's kind of dark to see, but let me show you on one of the lighter ones. So each one is folded. And say if I wanted this one to be right here, I would place it on the line like that. So on each one, only one wing is going to stick to the paper. So I'm gonna start the process and then once I get at regular speed and once I get up a certain part of the process, I'll go ahead and fast forward the speed because I don't want it to be boring on your side, but I want you to see what I'm doing all the way through just on a higher speed so you can see the process. Anyway, it's a fun thing to do um, whenever, I like to do it to music and because of copyright I can't play the music that I want to play, so when I know I'm going to fast forward, then I'll turn on my music. Ah, so I can craft. That's my favorite way to craft is to listening to music. Anyway, 
All right, so let me show you how I do it. Now I put, I put the art glitter glue, and I like to use this little container. It's got a super fine point tip. They also sell fine point tips for these. I've seen them on Amazon. This is where I get my glue as well. And, uh, but I really like these. Um, this is my, it's first out, it, first out in my glue uh, container. I have different types of glues for different projects. And I tell you, this one is the one I grab the very most. And so I like to have this little container. I just pour it in there, you know, shake it and then pour it in there. And it's got the tip on the end. Every once in a while, of course, it will get clogged as any tip will do. And I keep a, a piece of wire about that long, of 24 gauge wire. I just have it with this uh, blue tape here. And I just tape a piece of wire to the inside of one of my drawers here. That way I always have it handy to just stick it through, it unplugs it, and life goes on. So I probably do that maybe, you know, once a month. I mean, it really doesn't clog that often. So anyway, so there's my tips, my tips for doing the little dragonfly with glitter if you want to. So I've covered that. I've covered the glue I use, the eraser. Um, I think that's it. So I'll go ahead and I'll get started on gluing. I'm going to go with the darker color and graduate on up to the lighter ones. And then I'll also inter intersperse some of the dark ones and all the other ones to kind of go lightly through it. So every, every layer is going to have a little bit of each color or the color from below going up into the next color. All right, so here we go. I'm going to do this at regular speed and after a little while, then I'm going to go ahead and fast forward. So I'm going to pick it up. It doesn't matter which one. I'm just going with all the dark colors for right now. Oh, one thing I did mention, I put a pencil line about every two inches. That's just for reference. I don't have to do each color at that reference point. But since I'm doing four layers on this project, this would give me one, two, three, and the fourth layer. So I could start it, you know, anywhere close to this area. That's just so I don't like space out and forget to like go to the next color. So it's just a little reminder for myself because especially when I listen to music, I do have a tendency to space out. All right, so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up any dragonfly, doesn't matter which one, right? We've got all the designs in each one. I'm going to glue the part that is not folded, if that makes sense. And it doesn't need much. You just take it and put it pretty much anywhere. The first few I do, I do right on the heart line. I think y'all can see that. And this glue dries clear, so I don't have to worry about if any of it's hanging over. And remember, dragonflies fly all different, um, all different directions. So I'm just going to do this one right here. The, what I like to do is cover the line first and then fill in around.
Alrighty, so when I was making the design, I realized that I ran out of the lightest color. So I went ahead and I cut some more. And last time, when I was taking off the little dragonflies, I was using this as my tool. And what I found out um, after I had shut off the recording process when I was uh, doing some more, you know, uh, scraping of <laughs> the dragonflies, I realized that there was an easier way, at least uh, for me, was to use my extra large scraping tool from that Cricut makes. So if you're not aware, they make two different sizes. Uh, they make a, well, I just call them small and large, but I think they're actually called extra large and I don't know, whatever. But this is the one that I really, really like and use a lot. And then this is the regular size. I have a couple of these. They, these basically will come in a tool set. And then uh, this one will come in one tool set, I think. Or you can buy them, I believe, separately. Anyway, so it worked out a lot better. I was able to get more done. More scraping, you, you could say, as you can see. And I just wanted to make sure that I showed it to you. You have to be careful and make sure that, you know, like this part doesn't hit that like I had just done. But it does allow you to, you can pick up four at a time and just kind of scoop them off. I don't want to put them in a bowl yet. You could, but then I, I like to fold their wings first. So you could also just keep on scraping, but you really got to keep an eye and make sure you're not accidentally folding any of the ones um, underneath. So I just wanted to show you that tip. That was a lot, it ended up being a lot quicker when you're doing this amount of lifting of of insects if you will <laughs> it it uh it just went quicker and more efficient which is always a good thing when you're crafting right okay and even with these really thin ones it was working just fine with the real thin ones i just i didn't want to try and do too many at once besides the four seem to work best. And then you can tell certain places, like when I get up top, up here, where I've used my mat more, I keep forgetting to utilize more of my bottom mat, but then sometimes it's nice if you don't, because then when you really need a something to be really sticky. Usually I can use down here. So as you can see, oops, see I kind of crunched that little dragonfly. So that one will definitely look natural since dragonflies are not perfect. Oopsie. <laughs> So some of these are probably going to try to want to scooch. Like I was saying, this is a, a more well-used part of my mat. So I'm just doing it slow, making sure I'm not accidentally crunching one. And if I do, I probably have too many of these right now anyway. It's no big loss. So Definitely nothing to stress about. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna fold my wings, put them in the, in the bowl, and then I'll continue gluing and, and do the rest. So this is where I left off at. So I wanna use this to kind of fill in this more and do a little, little bit of the sprinkle out, and then it'll be done. So I'm gonna mute my sound and, and get busy. I'll see you in a bit.
Yay, so I wanted to show you the finished product. Um, my thoughts about it, I think it's beautiful. I think that going forward, if I were to rethink my color choices, I might go with either a lighter background because the dark color gets kind of lost with the black background or use this as the dark color and start layering with one more lighter color up top. But I love the glitter effect. It does bring it out. When I have this in a frame or in the frame and have it hanging on the wall, which I took it out because I wanted it to show it to you, it shows up really beautifully and the glitter really highlights all of the color throughout the project. Um, I'm, I'm actually very thrilled with the glitter in it. I'm really glad that I did it. So I wanted to show you real quick, you know, what it looks like close up. Hopefully there's, there's not a glare going on. Kind of get it up closer a little bit. Anyway, I think it turned out really, really pretty. I'm really looking forward to having it hang on my wall. So if I put it in the glass, it's going to give a glare, but let me just throw it in there really quick. really easy to put together. Like I said, there's going to be a glare, but you can see how beautiful that is and how beautiful it's going to be to be hanging on the wall. Let me see if I can scoot this over a little bit. Yeah, unfortunately, my lighting is, is kind of ruining it. But anyway, I hope you enjoy this project. Play with it. Change the colors. Um, use birds instead of dragonflies. I have both the files in my resource library for the, blue, the bird one or now the dragonfly one. And if you wanted to make your own, you know, feel free to even pick your own birds or different files in Cricut Design Space. Every one of these is from Design Space. And then depending on what you want to do with it, you can see how versatile you can be with a, just a simple paper project. All right. So you all take care and continue to create with love. Oh, I also wanted to mention, too, is if you make one of these, Feel free to post a picture on my Facebook page. It's called Creates with Love, and it's just a regular Facebook page. And anybody's welcome to post um, any of their projects or ask questions or leave comments, as well as on my YouTube channel. All right, take care and continue to create with love. Bye.